Welcome to Westpac's webinar entitled Sterile Barrier Testing Case Studies. Hello, I am Andrew Bevel and I will be your moderator and webinar organizer today. Before we start, let's take a moment to ensure that everyone is ready and familiar with the webinar control panel. First, you should have a control panel on the right side of your screen. You can minimize this panel by clicking on the orange arrow button in the upper left corner. You may expand the panel by clicking the same button. Secondly, you have the ability to submit questions using the chat pane located near the bottom of the control panel. We will be answering a few questions during the webinar. However, if we are unable to address your questions during the webinar, someone will follow up with an email afterwards. For those of you registered and logged into the live webinar, you can download a copy of the slide deck now. It's located in the handout section of the chat pane just above the questions area. You'll see a few documents there as well. Feel free to download these as our presenter will be referring to these documents during the presentation. With that, let's get started. Today's presenter is Alexia Kuris, Test Engineer 2 here at Westpac's San Diego Laboratory. Alexia started her career at our San Jose facility immediately upon graduating from San Jose State University with a bachelor's degree in packaging engineering. During her first two years as a test engineer, Alexia has performed testing on medical device and pharmaceutical packaging for dozens of life science clients. Her name is on the test engineer shortlist for many of our clients, several of whom are in attendance today. In her spare time, Alexia enjoys coaching a San Diego area high school lacrosse team and world travel vacations. Here's what we will be covering today. First, Alexia will start by explaining what sterile barrier integrity testing is all about. Then she'll dive into case study number one, which is on the gross leak detection test method. Then, after a brief pause for our first Q&A, we'll get into case study number two on dye penetration. Alexia has also included the advantages and disadvantages of each of the two test methods. Finally, we'll stop again for questions and answers. Our goal is to provide you with information you can use to increase your success rate, so be sure to submit questions using the chat pane located near the bottom of the control panel. If we are unable to address your question during the webinar, we will follow up with you by email afterwards. Alexia, the audience is ready. Take it away. Thanks, Andrew. As Andrew mentioned, we will be covering sterile barrier integrity testing. The purpose of the test methods we will discuss are to demonstrate and ensure the integrity of the sterile barrier system. Typically, after processes such as post sterilization and post performance testing. In order to ensure the package is free of breaches, which would allow microorganisms through the barrier, types of tests that we do here at Westpac include visual inspections, vacuum leak testing, gross leak detection, and dye penetration. For our first case study, we will be reviewing gross leak detection, also known as bubble testing. In order to protect and distribute these devices, the primary In order to ensure sterile integrity, gross leak detection outlined in ASTM standard F2096 will indicate any comparable factors of the sterile barrier system. By taking a 250 micrometer wire, a control sample is punctured and submerged one inch under water. Needles are used to puncture the package, supply the air source to inflate the package, and measure the internal test pressure. Once the test pressure indicates the known failure, the remaining pouches will be tested 0.1 psi above the known failure test pressure. This video here shows a leak on the Tyvek layer of the pouch. Because Tyvek is porous, bubbles will sit on the surface of the material. To correctly identify a failure, a constant stream of bubbles will be released from the punctured or breached area of the pouch. Common types of failures that are typically observed during gross leak detection include pinholes in the Tyvek material, tears in the poly material, as well as seal breaches and channel leaks. Ways to avoid these types of failures could be altering elements of the package design. Looking at how the device is housed in both the primary and secondary package is important. 
Also, keeping in mind the components of the device and knowing how to protect them is crucial. If you recall our device, the AK Ringe, it had several critical components, including the needle as well as the plunger. Using something like a device card or sleeve could keep the device in place and prevent possible punctures or tears in the pouch. Other recommendations to improve the sterile barrier could be changing the dimensions. A primary pouch with excess material could be an issue. All the extra space in the pouch could cause the device or instrument to shift inside. It is also likely that the components of your product could break. Think about instances during the distribution process. Things like drops and vibration have proven these failures when a device is not properly fit for its package. On the contrary, a pouch that is extremely snug may also be an issue. Stress to the seals and material could compromise the sterile integrity of the pouch. In addition, the device orientation and configuration should be considered to reduce the risk of failures. Creating a successful package design is not always easy. Factors such as sterilization, distribution, and environmental stresses need to be considered. It's important to ensure that the sterile barrier is not compromised. Sterilization processes such as ethylene oxide, gamma sterilization, and E-beam radiation can all impact the integrity of the package system. It's also important to understand the distribution stresses the package will be subjected to. In ASTM's package performance standard D4169, a distribution simulation test sequence is followed. Test inputs such as drops, compression, vibration, and high altitude testing can all have an impact on the package system. Considering environmental stresses is also important. Hot and cold as well as wet and dry conditions can potentially damage a package while being distributed. To ensure sterility and shelf life of a product and its package system, real-time and accelerated aging studies are also useful. Thank you, Alexia. Let's take a quick break and see if the audience has any questions that we can answer at this time. The first question is, what if a dangerous microorganism is smaller than 250 microns? So with gross leak detection, you're able to use a known failure up to 125 microns. Um, it's been determined that this is about an 85% success rate to indicate that failure. So that's why we use the 250 microns. Um, if you're looking more at seal integrity, dye penetration, you're able to um, find failures up to the 50 microns. Thank you, Alexia. Can you elaborate on differences and pros and cons of vacuum leak testing versus gross leak testing? Sure, so regarding vacuum leak testing, one of the benefits of using this test method is it's not destructive to the pouch as opposed to gross leak testing. And also it cannot be done for porous packaging because it's difficult to indicate the failures uh, due to the porous material of Tyvek. Thank you, Alexia. Let's continue on with the presentation. We'll now be covering our second case study, dye penetration testing. In this case study, our product will be a glass file packaged in a thermoform tray with a Tyvek lid stock. The dimensions of this primary package are as followed, eight inches by four inches by half an inch. The thermoform tray is packed out in a SBS carton, also known as its secondary package. The dimensions of this carton are 8.5 inches by 4.5 inches by 0.8 inches. The two test methods we will cover for detecting leaks in packaging by dye penetration follow ASTM standard F1929 and F3039, both revision 2015. Dye penetration for porous packaging is outlined in ASTM F1929. The three methods include method A, injection method, method B, the edge dip method, as well as method C, the eyedropper method. 
For non-porous packaging such as foil and poly pouches, ASTM standard F3039 is referenced. For this test, the dye penetration solution is made with a higher surfactant level in order to indicate the channel leaks. The two test methods included are method A, injection method, as well as method B, the flat surface wipe method. The types of failures that can be found during dye penetration testing include a breach or void in the seal. Dye penetration will also detect and locate a leak equal to or greater than a channel formed by a 50 micrometer wire in a package. If you have a look at our thermoform tray on the left side of your screen, you can see the void identified in the seal. Recommendations to protect and ensure sterility of your product are similar to those we mentioned for gross leak detection. It is important to consider the product to package contact. For instance, a pouch that is too small could cause a device to sit up against the seal, eventually causing a seal creep. Other recommendations include using different types of materials depending on your device or product. As far as proactive measures to avoid these types of failures, it is important to perform IQ OQPQ on sealing parameters. It is common that channel leaks are found in in-house seals of pouches as opposed to the manufacturer's seal for this reason. Before we open up the floor to questions, I want to review some pros and cons of each test method. The advantages of gross leak detection include, one, relatively low cost of equipment, two, the ability to find leaks down to 125 to 250 micrometers, three, testing of both porous and non-porous packaging, and lastly, four, the ability to validate the whole package integrity. On the flip side, some disadvantages would be, one, when running a gross leak detection test, small leaks can get lost in porous packages as it breathes. Two, the operator could inadvertently create a puncture. Three, device components could potentially get wet. And four, size limitation by a test lab's equipment. As the list of pros are similar to gross leak detection, one major advantage to dye penetration testing is the ability to evaluate a false positive failure from gross leak testing. Some cons include, one, the fast wicking of dye can make detecting leaks challenging. Two, failures such as channels and seals or breaches near the seal can be detected. Three, the dye formula is critical and can affect the results. And lastly, four, the internal components will turn blue. This wraps up our webinar, and I want to thank you all for tuning in. I'll give it back to Andrew so we can answer any questions. Alexia, thank you, Alexia. Fine presentation. Let's take a few minutes to answer any questions from the audience. Uh, the first question is to verify integrity of the sterile barrier, can you just perform bubble leak only? or is dye penetration required as well? So with gross leak detection, that is more of a package integrity test, whereas dye penetration is seal integrity. Um, this basically means with the gross leak detection, we're able to confirm and validate sterility of the entire package system. Um, dye penetration can usually be done for confirming false positive results from gross leak testing, so it's always good to um, go about doing both of those tests in case you find a false positive during gross leak testing. Thank you. Our next question, how do you distinguish between a puncture and the Tyvek versus actual breathing? So typically when we do gross leak detection um, testing, we, as I mentioned, the test process is taking the pouch, submerging it underwater, inflating the pouch, um, and typically with Tyvek material, that is porous, um, and you will see the material breathing. So one way to indicate whether you can see a, a, um, a failure in the pouch is running your fingers over the material, and if um, there is a constant stream of bubbles coming out of the pouch, you're able to um, confirm that as a failure. Thank you. The next question, please explain the difference between gross leak testing and burst testing. 
So gross leak testing, um, we're able to, basically the difference between them is one is a qualitative and one is a quantitative test. So with burst testing, you're able to actually get a value and um, a, basically a number that'll tell you what the burst strength of the pouch is or the tray, depending on what you're testing. Um, gross leak detection is just a pass-fail test. So there's a little bit more that goes into burst testing. Um, I believe we did a webinar on that in the past, so. Thank you, Alexia. Uh, there's another question that relates to that. Um, is burst testing required on any pouches if gross leak is performed? And I'll go ahead and answer this one. Uh, the burst testing is typically a seal strength evaluation, while gross leak is a sterile barrier evaluation. You can still perform burst testing on pouches that have gross leaks and you wouldn't be able to indicate whether there is a gross leak or not for that test. That's why you would run them separately for completely different validations. Uh, my, let's see, the last question I have here is, do test labs validate bubble leak testing and dye penetration testing? Yeah, so I think we talked about this earlier. Um, yeah, they do, they definitely do validate for bubble leak testing and dye penetration. Thank you, Alexi. It looks like one more question. What are some common issues you see, you see with package design as it relates to sterile barrier packages? So I think for me, most of the time, what we see with issues for the package design, um, typically when we get the secondary carton and we pull out the pouch or tray, um, typically the pouches, um, the folding is definitely crucial to how, you know, whether or not we will see failures. Um, how the device is housed in the package. If um, one recommendation I would suggest would be folding poly against poly material because exposing the poly side can be um, comparable to the sterile integrity of the pouch. It's really important to make sure that um, porous materials can develop channel leaks as a result so keeping folding at a minimum when you're housing it in the secondary package is really important. If you missed anything or would like to listen to this webinar again, please go to Westpac's website at www.westpac.com under the Resources Webinar tab. The webinar materials will be uploaded within the next couple of days. Please submit all test questions and quote requests to Westpac using the Contact Us link here or tab on our website. We will be sending you a short survey within a few minutes. Please take a moment to give us your input. We highly value your comments regarding today's webinar. You'll also have the opportunity to ask questions and suggest future webinar topics. We have two test lab locations, one in San Jose, California, and one in San Diego, California. Please contact us with any test questions, need for information, or if you'd like a quote for testing. Thank you all for attending. I am Andrew Bevel. Make it a great day.